Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And um, what I wanted to talk about this week kind of dovetails a little bit off of last week's video, which was the Best Dressed Gunman. And if you haven't seen that already, I definitely recommend that you go check it out. It was a fun video to make and had some great response to it. So uh, it's definitely worth checking out once we're done here. The other reason that I wanted to touch on this was because I'm only a few weeks off of the Range Master Tactical Conference, and one of the blocks of instruction that I took when I was there was Daryl Bulky's Pocket Snubby class, and he really delved into some of the details of the, the merits and application of Pocket Snubbies. Now, for me personally, if you've been following uh, the channel, and especially my Instagram, you'll know that for about the last couple of years, I've been playing with a 32 in a pocket because the slim profile of it just seemed to work a lot better for me than the overall bulk and dimension of a revolver. The, the revolver was something that I was struggling to make work. Um, and one of the things that I realized was, uh, when I say it, it's not going to come as any surprise. Honestly, I was picking the wrong holster, and it's not that I was picking bad quality holsters, but the uh, the holsters that I've been running up to this point were all uh, rather stout leather. This example is Daryl's collaboration with Simply Rugged. It's a phenomenal pocket holster. It's secure. It stays in the pocket. The extra band of leather on the outside allows you to hold a speed strip or an ID or your My Bad 20 or a whole bunch of stuff. But it's stout. It is, it's really thick stock leather. And the overall thickness of it, as well as the profile, um, it didn't give me the discretion and the concealment that I wanted. Now, when I mentioned this to Daryl, he said that I need to stop wearing skinny jeans and start wearing man pants. Uh, to which I responded, you know, I, I, I was legitimately curious as to how he is able to make this work. And much to my dismay, he had the audacity to suggest that I wear relaxed fit pants and shorts, um, which just isn't going to happen. Um, I'm already, you know, a fairly substantial build, and I prefer something that is a bit more uh, streamlined for the aesthetic. And uh, the other thing is, is honestly, relaxed fit pants kind of make you look like you're walking around wearing a diaper. So I'm not a huge fan. Good news is I don't have to make that compromise. Um, the Simply Rugged holster, like I said, is phenomenal. It's well designed, it's well executed. It's just not the best suited for my particular use case. Um, I'm gonna get into that a little bit more in a minute. The main advantages to pocket carry as a concept are simply the fact that uh, Daryl equates it to a man's pockets are kind of like a woman's purse. It is really socially unacceptable to go in uninvited, um, and it's, with very limited exception, uh, it's, it is at least abnormal to ask somebody to empty their pockets. Um, now, if you've seen the video that I talk about where uh, I was carrying at work and the, the consequences of that, you'll know that I was actually instructed to turn out my pockets in, in that particular example. So, um, in a true denied area where you're subject to some kind of, of actual search. It may not be sufficiently discreet, but if you don't get to that point, it certainly has its advantages. Um, and the other part is that it is socially acceptable to walk around with your hands in your pockets, and it's really the only circumstance where you have a genuine sub-second draw that's not a staged presentation. Uh, so, empty revolver, just in case anybody's curious. The big, you know, the big plus is that anytime you're starting with your hand on your gun, you're already halfway there. And so that's the merit of it. Now, going back to the holster design that I was talking about, um, the Mika holsters, Mika holsters, are what I found actually works the best. It is definitely a, a thinner profile leather, and even in some relatively lightweight slacks like these, you can tell that there's something in my pocket, but
but it certainly doesn't scream gun. It even goes a little bit further than that, though, because as I mentioned, I also like running my little P32 Keltec, and uh, I got two different versions of this one specifically. And the, the one that I'm demonstrating with here is the square bottomed version as opposed to the round bottomed version. What I like that Robert does is he offers both because you may not be aware that pockets are actually cut differently. And you want one that is cut to kind of mirror whatever the shape of your pocket is. Now, regardless, I find the round bottomed one to be a bit more versatile. And here's why. What I've noticed, and this was true of the Simply Rugged as well as even the, uh, the Mica holster, is the square bottom pulls the fabric taut at that point. And it pulls it taut not only laterally, but vertically as well. So what that ends up doing is it actually accentuates the angle of the grip. And I found this to be the case if you're using a semi-auto that tends to have more angular features or even applies to the revolver where it's got a much more rounded profile. That rounded profile is another big advantage of specifically snubbies for pocket carry because whenever you are in the process of this draw, it is really challenging. I mean, I had a lousy grip on the things purposefully to expose more of the ass end of the gun and it didn't hang up on the pocket. It just ramped off. And there's not as many semi-auto pistols that have that same kind of profile. Happily, the P32 is kind of one of them. Uh, I say kind of because if your grip is low enough on this back strap, it can snag on the uh, on the pocket coming out. So in that instance, the draw ideally needs to be a little bit more back than it does straight up. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this ties into my, um, <clears throat> to my uh, best dressed gunman video, and you, you might be wondering how. Well, the interesting thing is that the biggest criticism of pocket guns that you'll hear is, oh, well, is that what you want to have when you're confronted with the active shooter, you know, blah, blah, at the mall, Walmart, whatever. Um, the answer is no, but that's not what these are for. And Daryl does a great job of delineating between going to trouble guns and getting out of trouble guns. Um, this is not a fighting handgun. This is an emergency, like this is the reserve parachute kind of circumstance. This is the break contact weapon, uh, to steal the phrase from Claude Warner, a tactical professor. And um, given the circumstances that most of us are most likely to encounter when it comes to violent crime, these are the anti-mugging, anti-assault guns. The advantage of being able to start with your hand on the gun is a huge one. Um, if you try and pay them to go away, you know, if, that, if it's that My Bad 20 or whatever, uh, you know, somebody's hassling you for five bucks and you give them five bucks and suddenly that's not enough. Well, if you're going to give them anything else, you have to go back into your pockets to do it. And so if you're carrying appendix or behind the hip or what have you, there's not really an acceptable reason to go to the waistband for anything, but going into your pockets is, is definitely kosher. So there are some advantages to it. Now, there are folks out there that will use it to augment uh, another carry method and, and for backup guns, if that's your thing, um, pocket gun is, is definitely worth considering. Now, again, to tie it back to the best dressed gunman, one that was absent from the video itself was Johnny Depp's portrayal of John Dillinger in Public Enemies. And the interesting thing is if you watch that film, Whenever he's going to work, you know, he's got double 1911s in shoulder holsters. He's, he's loaded for bear. But whenever he is just around town living his life and doing things that are recreational, he's got a 32 in his pocket. He doesn't have, you know, the, the two full house 1911s uh, under his coat. So uh, that's the, the, the concept still applies. Now, 
everybody is going to do their own math on this, and the people who are going to blow past the majority circumstance and focus exclusively on the Sentinel events, I'm not going to convince them anyway, so I'm not even going to bother trying. But my math kind of goes like this. Uh, pocket guns, and specifically the 32, is when I've done the risk assessment and it's either there is virtually no chance that I'm going to need a gun, so this is the gun I'm going to carry, or let's say, for example, I am a guest at somebody else's social function or work function. Uh, so I am now just by proxy a representative of them. And I am in relatively close contact with a bunch of people all night, uh, whether that be intentionally, handshakes, hugs, possibly dancing, or whether it be accidental. You know, Typically at these events there is uh, some kind of uh, alcohol service and some people can't hang, don't know how to handle themselves, and will uh, sometimes lose control of their faculties and suddenly I can't control if some drunken idiot stumbles into me and falls into my appendix carry Glock 19. But if somebody does bump into me go, well, what's supposed to be squishy isn't, what is that? Even if I'm not a known quantity and they don't know me as a gun guy, again, it starts raising unnecessary questions. And the other, the other part of the equation, and this is just my take on it, um, in those circumstances, if I am in a target-rich environment, either A, I catch the first bullet, in which case how I'm carrying a gun and where is kind of irrelevant, or I'm not, in which case somebody else is being shot at and the difference in access time between a pocket and a range draw of an appendix carry is uh, insignificant uh, to, the, to the outcome of things anyway. So that is how I've done the math. I'm sure there's folks that disagree. What do you think? Are you currently running a pocket gun? If so, what's the pistol and what's the holster that you're using? Uh, what have you run into challenge-wise? Am I completely off base, and uh, is this going to get me killed in the streets? Put that down in the comments, too. So if this is the kind of stuff that you like talking about and delving into and troubleshooting, join the Facebook group at Bespoke Solutions. We've got a ton of conversation like this helping to kind of uh, rectify the balance between defensive carry gear and you know a, a suitably appropriate wardrobe. And uh, if you're getting mileage out of the channel and you want to support it directly, I've got the Patreon up as well. We've had some fantastic live streams and some giveaways. You got more of that coming up. And so aside from that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous. Stay sharp. <laughs>